Hello and welcome to this update video on the Digital Bird Wi-Fi controller. And this controls all parts of the system, including the pan tilt, the head, the slider, uh, the digital turntable, you name it. Uh, and if this doesn't function well, then nothing else will. So the big problem I had was this was that the ESP32 in here and the uh, next on display are actually quite power hungry together. Um, <clears throat> and originally I was using these little uh, 1200 milliamp hour batteries and while they lasted almost two hours when brand new um, that quickly fell away I discovered uh, in a very short time I was down to just get an hour out of it I also had concerns over the uh, feather board uh, feather ESP32 that I've got in here which is nice and small and purportedly charges these batteries but it never seemed to do such a good job and the feather had to be powered, in other words, the controller had to be switched on in order for it to be charging the battery, which meant it was draining the battery at the same time as it was charging it. Uh, so we now have a dedicated charging board built in here as well, and a number of battery options as well, both for this one and an even bigger one. So without more of ado, we'll get into basically a redo of how we construct this beast and uh, take it from there. Okay, so what we've got laid out before us and what comes with the slider kit is your ESP32 feather board, which is a nice small format version of the ESP32. And it, you can buy it without the pins attached, which is nice because then we only have a few pins that we actually want to pull from it and we can make it nice and neat in the case. We have our Nexteon 2.8 uh, inch display, which is a little touch display. And if you've bought it with the slider kit, it will come pre-programmed. If not, um, there are instructions on the GitHub website on how to program that. It's very simple. Um, on top of that, we have a new, uh, and this is key, um, a new LiPo charging board, which allows us to charge the batteries uh, without the need of using the onboard charging on this, which proved to be a little inefficient. Um, a number of wiring harnesses, the first one being uh, for a toggle switch, and the other one being for the Nexteon, and it has a 5 volt boost, because these are 3.7 volt batteries, and the Nexteon needs 5 volt uh, supply, so we boost the 3.7 to 5 with this little board in here. And... Uh, this connects, the, the, these um, singles here connect into the uh, feather board. Uh, this little harness here is designed to work with the LiPo charging port and the battery. Now, if you've previously bought this um, package from me, you'll find that you already have all of this kit, except for those two parts here. So there's nothing to stop you buying one of these little boards, creating a little harness and uh, uh, you know, re reprinting the kit to, to allow the use of the new system. Now, the box itself has been made deeper. This is to allow for bigger batteries. And we have two battery options now. We have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, and it comes with a back, and you'll find both backs available on the Thingverse website. Uh, so basically, <clears throat> this battery takes up the whole of the back like that, and, and gives you the best part of the <laughs> entire day. Uh, operating without having to worry about the battery. Um, but the other option is um, the 2000 milliamp power batteries will give you a good two and a half, three hours uh, of life. And uh, I've created a back uh, that holds that battery in place. Uh, uh, and the, the, the naming of those files are obvious the 2000 milliamp power back or the 5000 milliamp power back which doesn't have any keeper for the battery. Okay, so we'll put these down here just now. In terms of this little board, this one's got, oh, this one's got two uh, white connectors on it, but the ones I will put, be putting in the kit have, uh, are, are marked as red and black uh, for positive and negative, so you know which, which uh, set of wires to, to plug in here. Uh, I've also elected to go, you can get these boards as standard mini USB or a USB-C. I've elected, along with the rest of the world's uh, current thinking, to go with USB-C. Um, 
my camera, a Sony camera, works with USB-C and I think generally everything is going that way. The nice thing about USB-C is you don't, it doesn't matter which way around you plug the cable in, it still works. Okay, so let's have a look at, first of all, at the box. Now the box is actually two parts. Now, I've already glued this, this one together, but basically it comes with a bezel and uh, the box itself. And the reason I printed it not just as, as one box is I found I was getting a better printing result if I printed the bezel uh, separately. It came, came out much cleaner. So now I print the bezel as a separate object and then just super glue it together. Uh, just being as careful as possible not to get any super glue around the, the sides because it tends to turn plastic white. So our first thing is really to take our harness for our um, next day on display and that should just plug in here. Most of the connections being fairly obvious. Uh, it's wise but not essential to pre-program the next day on before you assemble the kit. And this should just drop in this way. There's a indent on this side and the switch side, if you like, is where the, the cable harness goes. And that should just drop simply into the bottom of the box like so. Okay. And just move the cables out of the way just now. The next thing to look at is the this cradle now for the, the, the little board we have here. And this little board should just slot into that cradle, like so. Don't push it all the way because it will go past and through the hole. So just push it till it's flush with the end of that cradle to begin with. We can take our harness and as I say, yours will be red and black. The red one will go into the red socket. And the black one will go into the black socket. Okay, so we have that just ready to go. Now, what we can then do is just, that goes right into this corner and should just press down, like so. Press it all the way down until it connects and you should see the USB-C uh, on the hole in the side of the case and just press the board out a little bit more until that USB-C just starts to pop through its hole right there. Okay. So the next step is to look at our feather boards and you notice that the feather boards, if you've bought one yourself, you put some black tape over the back of it just to prevent it from making any contacts with the, the back of the Nexteon and getting unwanted shorts. And what we have here is the orange, now this might be orange, it might be red, but this cable goes into the positive on the feather. The black cable goes onto this port here, which is the negative. Like so. We have our <clears throat> red and green wires, which is our um, in and our out to the next day on. And now we can just press the uh, ESP32 down into th this corner like so. And you should see that your uh, micro USB <clears throat> connects with that hole there. Now we just want to arrange these cables a bit so that they stay out the way of the top of that. And the batteries come right down onto the top of this so you don't want any cables running higher than the point of those two plugs. So we can just press that into the corner and just keep these up out of the way just now. Next we take our uh, small micro switch and press that through the hole in the side. Let's pull everything through. And then just press the switch home until it's in the recess. Okay. Now the long cable from that switch 
which is this one here. This plugs into our feather board here. This way around. Oh, maybe it doesn't, it's that way around. There we go. And that leaves us with these switches. Now this switch So this one here that's attached to the switch harness, the, this one from the LiPo charger plugs into the switch harness. Okay. That leaves one left here from the LiPo charger and that's for the battery to go into. So if you're using the 200, it's the same type of socket. Just be certain if you are the bat these batteries don't all come supplied with the same size socket and they don't also come supplied with the socket with the red and the black the same way around so you have to be absolutely certain that when you attach these sockets that your colors are matching up otherwise you'll see smoke coming out of your esp32 which is never very good um so if we put this one aside the moment we'll have a look at the getting the large battery in there because that's the, the harder of the two. It really is just a case of arranging these um, wires so that they're not taking up very much room. And as I say, key here is to keep all your wires so that they can go away lower than the height of those two sockets. That way your battery will, will fit. <clears throat> so you can take your, in this case, the 5000 milliamp hour battery And plug this in here and then the battery should just fit quite nicely into there and just make sure that <clears throat> the height of the battery is lower than the height of the top of the case. There's a small tab on this side of the, the back okay and you'll find that there's a slot in the side of the case for that to go into on the opposite side from the switch. So that simply goes into that slot there, it comes down on this side and it should snap together pretty well. And then you take two of these M1 screws, self-tappers, and screw that home. Right, I'm not going to sit and have you watch me struggle to get that screw in there. It will go in there and there's another one to go in this side as well. And notice as well that there are, as per before, two of the 8mm magnets on the side of these and it's important that they match the polarity uh, or opposite to the polarity on the, all the other devices. Here's the, uh, the pan head, for example, the simple pan head turntable and the batteries need to match so that when you snap the two together they actually connect. Uh, all the digital bird devices have a, a position on them for this controller with a set of magnets and it's you just need to make sure that your controller magnets match everything else that you've you've built. Screw that together later and you can just check that everything is working properly in here. Just make sure the numbers go up and down. Now charging wise so while, as I say, while it is possible to charge through the micro USB port on the Feather, um, it, the, the system has to be powered on to do that. So much more useful is the USB-C port on the side here. And if I find a USB-C cable plugged in somewhere, power off, plug it in any way around, and you will see that there is a small red light you can see through that hole above the USB-C port and that will turn green when the battery is charged. Red when the battery is charging, green when it's charged. Simple as that. And that's it for the controller. <laughs>